Hey, hey, all you mentees, this is the Uncanny Omar from Near Mint Condition, and join me today for an advanced look at the Conan the Barbarian by Kurt Busiek and Carrie Nord from Marvel Comics, so please stay tuned. And welcome back, everybody. Before I get started, a huge thank you to David Gabriel and the folks at Marvel for sending us an advanced copy of this omnibus. This omnibus is due out in the direct market on Wednesday, November 25th, and then a couple of weeks later in the book market. And of course, the direct market is always places like CheapGraphicNovels.com, InStock Trades, Tales of Wonder, and your local comic book shop. And speaking of the direct market, this is the standard cover edition. On the left is your direct market cover. And a direct market cover, again, can only be found in those places that I named previously. So what is Conan the Barbarian by Kurt Busiek and Carrie Nord? If you already have the Conan the Barbarian, the original Marvel Years Omnis, do you still need this? Or if you already have the Savage Sword of Conan, do you still need this omnibus? Well, yes, because this is the Dark Horse Years. This collects the Kurt Busiek re-imaging of Robert E. Howard's masterpiece, Conan. So let's talk about it. But before I do, let's do a quick little comparison to what these other releases are like right next to this one. One of my favorite things about the design of the Conan Omnis is that they are all identical other than the volume numbers, of course, and then Savage Sword over here. So on the left, you have the original Marvel years. On the right, you have the Savage Sword of Conan, the original Marvel years. And here is Conan the Barbarian. So there's no volume number. The spine is different than these. As a matter of fact, the design under the dust jacket is different than the original Marvel years. On the back, you don't get the thumbnail of each of the covers. You just have another image of Conan. And the retail, by the way, is identical. That is the one thing that is very similar to these. Is This is $125. All of it has parental advisory such as the mature content from Savage Sword. For the same reason, this has parental advisory. So let's look at it under the dust jacket. It is exactly the same images that you have on the dust jacket right underneath it. And of course, the Colossal comparison. So this is the Colossal Conan from Dark Horse and compared to the Conan the Barbarian by Kurt Busiek and Carrie Nord Omnibus. So a lot of the stories that you find here have been reprinted before in this Colossal format, but this thing is long gone and out of print. But this is what they look like side by side. Comparing the spines and the back. Of course, this thing retailed for $150 when it originally came out. But let's talk about what's collected in this omnibus. Okay, so let's get this opened. As I was mentioning, this is a retelling from Kurt Busiek when he was over at Dark Horse of Robert E. Howard's masterpiece. This is all set during the Hyborian Age, and it's a gritty new take on it. So it's violent, um, and I'll talk a little bit about what it collects in here. But first of all, here is the credits, right? Who wrote what issue? And then this is really interesting. This is the table of contents. Because this book is not mapped in the publishing order. This book is mapped in chronological order. And I'll talk about what that means here in a second. So we have Conan, the legend. This is issue number zero. It came out in 2003 and just kick-started the whole um, Conan series. And then it collects issues 1 through 28. Issue 32, so 29 through 31 were the issues by Mike Mignola. They are not collected in this omnibus. Uh, and then it collects issues 39, and then 45 through 46. And the Conan Book of Thoth, issues 1 through 4. Now, those other issues that are missing that are not Mike Mignola, they're all written by Tim Truman. And Tim Truman is joined by Carrie Nord on the artwork. So... Perhaps, if this book sells enough, we will get a second volume, or the Tim Truman collection. So, we go from Conan number zero to Conan number eight. This is what I mean by mapped in chronological order, not publishing order. So, every the original Colossal Conan was mapped with issue zero all the way through 50, in that order, because that was the publishing order. This is mapped in chronological order, starting with The Legend of Conan. So it's kind of like a retelling of all these folk stories that they've heard about Conan. And then it talks about his birth into his childhood. And these are all flashback stories that were told through different issues, uh, kicking it off with issue 8. And then from issue 8, we move on to issue 15. And then from issue 15, we move on to issue 23. And then 32, and then 45, and 46. 
And all those are flashbacks. I gotta be careful flipping through here because the mature content that's in here is not just violence, but also sexual content and nudity. So there's a lot of that in here. So very much like the Savage Sword of Conan, if you're familiar, actually more grittier than that. There's a lot of disturbing imagery in here, which for me, awesome, kick ass. I love this stuff. This is the stuff that made me into a Conan fan. I had not read the Marvel years until I got that very first omnibus and I'm loving it. The Roy Thomas stuff is amazing, but the Kurt Busiek run and we're finally here with issue number one. So this is issue number one, which should have followed issue zero, but they're doing it in chronological order. And that's really cool because it reminds me of the way that the Transformers IDW stuff is mapped, the TMNT IDW stuff, all that stuff that's mapped that way. It's done in chronological order, not in publishing order. So for example, you saw all those issues like issues 23, 32, 45, and 46. And then we get to issue one through seven, which is a big chunk of the story. And then since issue eight is the second issue collected in this omnibus, we jump back to issue number nine, which is the beginning of the next story arc, and that takes us all the way up until tw the, the 20s. So a retelling, a lot of these stories have been previously told in the original Marvel years. So get ready for that. A lot of the same stories that you've previously read, you're rereading again by a new author and a new artist. And one of my favorite things about the art, what Kerry Nord does here, it's very similar to what Salvador La Roca did in the pages of Extreme X-Men, and that is just literally colors on top of pencils, right? There's no inks, there's just pencils, and I love that. It reminds me of the stuff that I enjoyed about the manga Blade of the Immortal. And this is just as brutal as Blade of the Immortal, I will say that. And everything is collected in here. Uh, that's one of the very first things I did besides properly opening up the omnibus. I wanted to make sure nothing was censored or anything. And everything is in here the way that I remembered. Other than, well, the Colossal Conan is freaking huge. Uh, this, you can still feel your hands and arms after holding it and reading it for a while. But just the retelling of my favorite Sumerian stories. You have the Frost Giant's daughter, uh, the God in the Bowl, the Tower of the Elephant, and then Thoth Amon which becomes one of his big arch nemesis. And most of the stuff in here, Kerry Nord does the artwork for. And Kerry Nord did join Tim Truman on all those missing issues from here, so it'd be pretty cool to collect those. Now this book has 1,024 pages and retails again for $125. Let's look in the back at the extras. But before we do, I did want to showcase some of this oversized artwork by Kelly Jones because this four-issue miniseries, uh, The Book of Thoth, was not included in the Colossal Conan. So this is new to oversized format. Uh, it has been released in Epic Collection. As a matter of fact, um, all these stories have been previously released by Marvel in their Epic format. Now, let's get back to the extras. So we have some variant covers. Here we have Jeffrey Scott Campbell's cover, a variant here by Kerry Nord. I love that variant and some more variants and house ads when this they were i mean i remember when this was coming out they were pushing it big they were trying to get everybody to buy conan and here's the colossal conan cover collected back here you have this gray border very similar to that tan border that they use in the conan the original marvel yearbooks and character designs as a matter of fact i don't think i've seen some of this stuff because there really weren't any extras in the Colossal Conan, and I never had the trade paperbacks. But sketches, character designs, and settings. It's a whole lot of extras back here. I want to say it's about 100 pages of extras. That's really cool. Now some of these I do remember seeing. The introduction here, the forward. Kurt Busiek introduction. You know Kurt Busiek is like Roy Thomas when it comes to these introductions. Oh, and then they started printing these uh, Chronicle of Conan, the Chronicler of Conan uh, trade paperbacks. So some of that is collected here. And you have some maps. And then the script for issue 22. Now, let's talk about this binding. So the book is sewn binding. And here is what that eye looks like. But let's talk about this printing here. And what I mean by that is the paper quality. That's something I noticed immediately. And I think that's because I was getting out all my Conan books and flipping through them because that's what I like to do. I look freaking like a 12 year old kid reading comics all over again. I can't just put something down and use it as a prop. But it reminded me of the paper quality that's found in Conan the Barbarian, the original Marvel Years Volume 4. As far 
as the thickness of it. It's it's thinner than the other books because going comparing it to volume one and two, volume one and two are thicker. Now that could be because both of these books are printed in Turkey. They're printed at the same printer and that's iMac Offset in Istanbul, Turkey. Both this and Conan, the original Marvel Years Volume 4 are printed there. But that's one thing I immediately noticed was the paper quality in this book reminded me of this and I know it's a little thinner than I'm used to. So for example, compared to the Volume 2, which was printed in China at the Donley printer, this is thicker paper than this here. So because of the thinner paper, whenever you're trying to keep the book open towards the very beginning, this heavier bookend page keeps wanting to close it. Now that's where the binding comes in and it helps out. So let's look at a splash page, which is very difficult to compare in the original Marvel years because they weren't really using splash pages. But here, this is modern art. So I know there's several splash pages within this book. As you can tell, there is a little bit of gutter loss right here. I mean, you have to hold this down in order to see this character's full arm. Now that was about 20 something pages in. Here we are at 100 plus pages in and there's still just a little bit of gutter loss and you can tell by the writing. And here we are over half of the way through the book and there is a little bit of gutter loss right there. But I did want to point that out. The book is gorgeous and if you've not read this, you owe it to yourself to read it. If you're a fan of the original Marvel years and have not read this new retelling of Conan, I'd love to know what you think. But that is my overview, and that, as they say, is that. You can purchase this from our sponsor, CheapGraphicNovels.com, your online home for brand new graphic novels and collected editions up to 50% off the cover price. Cheap Graphic Novels prides itself on packaging your books so they arrive safely and in excellent condition, as well as prompt and helpful service. Beginning Thanksgiving morning, visit their bargain bin for Black Friday deals up to 90% off cover price. New items will be added throughout the day and the rest of the holiday season. Cheap Graphic Novels, your source for the hottest books with the kind of deep discounts, quality shipping, and customer service that will keep you coming back for more. And that was the page count, the build, and the content of this omnibus. Let me know in the comments down below if you're picking this up, if you're hoping that they'll do a second omnibus that collects the Truman run, the Mignola stuff that they passed up on, eventually the Brian Wood stuff. Like I mentioned, it probably all depends on how well this one sells. Again, this was the Uncanny Omar. If you have any other questions, let me know in those comments down below. Please don't forget to hit that like, subscribe button, and ring that bell for notifications to let you know when our videos are going live. We can be found on Redbubble and on Patreon, amazing ways to support the channel if you can do so. Thank you to our existing patrons. More importantly, please everybody stay healthy, stay safe, and much love to all of you.